mail. Mail is an important part of our society. It delivers our dreaded council taxes, our expensive bills, and it delivers what we want, whether it would be for our essential needs or for entertainment. Therefore, it is highly important that we get our mail in the most quickest and efficient modes of transport. In the UK, almost all of the country's mail is transported by roads and planes. However, back in the old days, it was really common to see mail being delivered by a train. In the 1800s, hundreds of railway companies across the country had adopted a method of mail transport called the Travelling Post Office. The idea behind this was that every passenger train would have specially designed coaches where many workers would quickly sort out letters and parcels and drop them off at every station en route. The idea had proven to be so popular, in fact, that in 1838, Parliament created the Railways Conveyance of Mail Act, effectively making mail trains a law. And soon, many countries around the world had begun operating their own mail trains. However, after the Second World War, with the popularity of air travel and highways, cars and trucks began taking over many mail operations away from the railways, and mail trains began to fade away into obscurity, and many countries began to ditch them entirely. However, British Rail was determined to change that. Throughout the 1960s and the 1970s, British Rail had tried a variety of methods to try and compete with road and air and win back mail transportation through the use of trains. In 1969, British Rail had launched the Parcel Post Plan, which would have aimed to create a variety of mail trains travelling from London to Nottingham and Birmingham and Bristol with a speed of 90 miles per hour. But as Royal Mail had announced plans to invest in computerised automatic sorting in their post offices, the travelling post office trains complete with crew was pretty much obsolete at this point. But it was in 1978 though that things got even more bad. As due to the fact that Britain's rail network was too slow and outdated for fast mail trains, Royal Mail had announced that all mail traffic by rail would be replaced with air travel, complete with many mail hubs at airports in Leicestershire and Scotland, effectively creating a network where 3 million parcels per annum could be transported, way more than what British Rail could do. And by the turn of the 1980s, where more air mail hubs were opening, and when Royal Mail had also launched their Roadrunner scheme for mail transport by road, British Rail's biggest sources of income was practically Thanos snapped in front of their eyes, and the British mail train looked like it was to be dead forever. However, by the turn of the 1990s, British Rail was determined to change all of that. Uh, again. In the late 1980s, British Rail was divided into business sectors, which were basically a bunch of shadow companies under the control of the British Rail Board itself. Among those shadow companies was the Rail Express System Sector, or RES for short. The idea behind Rail Express Systems was that this would take over all mail train operations. Now, you may be wondering, but Royal Mail decided to abandon their mail train operations. Well, in 1993, Royal Mail decided to approach the Rail Express Systems company with a new idea to revive mail trains with British Rail. This plan would be known as Railnet. The intention of Railnet was that it aimed to be a revitalized and a more modern mail train network where all post offices in British Rail's larger stations would be replaced with dedicated mail terminals dotted in places like Tunbridge in the south, with a main hub at Wilston in London, so that new purpose-built trains would transport letters and parcels between the new terminals, which would be expected to be capable of transferring a whopping 100 million letters per week. So, British Rail decided to jump on board, no pun intended. With a projected cost of £150 million in total, Royal Mail and British Rail got to work. On the 30th of September 1996, Royal Mail opens the Wilsdon Railnet Terminal, which was a huge 15-acre road and rail hub where all of Royal Mail's operations in London were to be based. The idea of the terminal was that it would basically function the same way as a regular terminus station for passenger trains, but of course the major difference is that there would be no passengers. Instead, it would work like this. A London-based mail truck would arrive to the terminals, workers would sort out the letters and parcels heading out of London, load them onto the train, the train would then head off to another railnet terminal, and drop off the letters and parcels there so that the trucks could pick them up and deliver them. While Royal Mail went and built their terminals, the Rail Express Systems Company went and picked up the trains that would serve the network. 
And as a result, Rez picked out a fleet of converted DMU and EMU passenger trains and locomotives like the Class 114s, the Class 302s, and Class 47s, as well as a variety of Class 08 shunters and a total of 700 mail vans. However, British Rail had quickly replaced the local hauled mail trains with brand new 100 miles per hour purpose built trains. Those new trains in particular was the Class 325. The concept of a Class 325 is pretty simple. Just take an old British Rail Class 319 unit. Take off the cab, take off the windows, take off the doors, take off the seats, just basically take off anything that makes it a passenger train. Then give it Royal Mail branding, replace the doors with shutters, and then stick on an old networker cab, and you have a Class 325. Throughout the mid-1990s, the Railnet scheme was slowly implemented across the rail network, and towards 1996, the Railnet scheme was finally completed, where a total of nine terminals opened, as well as several mail facilities across 45 stations. However, the celebration of the launch of Railnet didn't really last long, as it would already have problems due to a little thing that happened in the mid-90s. Now... What happens in the 1990s? Oh yeah, this dickhead came in. The private sector will run it better and passengers will get a better service. This, this person doesn't know what the hell he's doing. In 1996, British Rail was privatised completely, and it was split into the ownership of several private companies for maintenance, ownership of rolling stock, and passenger rail and freight rail. After privatisation, the Rail Express system sector was then put up for sale as a shadow franchise. And not long after, in 1995, the Railnet network would fall into the hands of the English, Welsh and Scottish Railway, or EWS for short a freight-based company that was owned by the Wisconsin Central Railroad Company in the US. After the Rail Express system sector was privatised, the Class 325s were completed and were intended to start service as soon as possible. However, thanks to the establishment of our wonderful privatised railways... Oh my god... <laughs> The new Class 325 fleet were not allowed to enter service, as the then new private infrastructure firm Railtrack had then set out a set of new safety rules for British Rail's previously owned fleet of trains to adhere to, to which the Class 325s couldn't be able to meet the new safety criteria in their current state, which was accepted by British Rail. Royal Mail had spent a total of 15 months to try and refurbish the Class 325s to comply with Railtrack's safety assessments, but the hypocritical arseholes of Railtrack said no. So Royal Mail went to the Department of Transport and basically just started a tantrum to demand a resolution with Railtrack and get their Class 325s into service. And so, the Department of Transport, Railtrack and Royal Mail had agreed to a compromise. <laughs> and only one unit had entered service on one of the routes. However, towards September of 1996, all Class 325s had finally entered service. So, after the privatisation of British Rail and sorting out issues with Railtrack, the Railnet scheme was finally completely operational. However, the problems only grew worse, and already, Royal Mail was starting to think twice about Railnet. In mid 2000s, following the tragic disaster of the Hatfield rail crash, Railtrack had decided to implement speed restrictions due to the nature of the tracks not being properly well maintained. And also, they closed several railnet corridors. Why? I have no fucking idea. Because of these restrictions, Royal Mail had already started to lose a tiny bit of confidence in the reliability of their mail trains. And despite the fact that Railnet was more or less gaining success by operating 49 mail trains by 2001, along with EWS being awarded for its incredible punctuality, Royal Mail wasn't exactly celebrating behind the scenes. As by this point, as due to the incompetence of Railtrack and their pointless restrictions on mail train corridors, their 
faith in mail trains had practically deteriorated severely. In fact, on that same year in 2001, Royal Mail had even began discussions with EWS to downright terminate the mail train contract altogether. And they had even began to switch several mail operations from rail back to road and air travel. And finally, in 2003, after a heated discussion with EWS, Royal Mail had pretty much already given up and had announced that the Railnet scheme would be binned entirely. And on the 4th of January 2004, the last mail train departed. The Railnet scheme was trashed. Except. Royal Mail decided to change their mind at the last minute. And then... changed their mind again. <laughs> On the 1st of December 2004, Royal Mail had began a partnership with another freight operator by the name of GBRF, where mail train operations with the Class 325 fleet would start again at a small scale for only three months during the Christmas period. However, in 2005, GBRF was so successful that Royal Mail eventually decided to keep it running for a little while longer. However, this new scheme would be nothing like the old days of Railnet. Far from being a wide and modern mail train network, it had now become a downgraded service where it only ran from Wilson in London to Shieldmoor in Scotland, operating two trains each night and later on six. But despite this, Royal Mail's newly revitalised mail trains were so popular that their contracts kept getting successfully renewed well into the 21st century. However, come to the 2020s, as maintenance of the Class 325s was becoming increasingly more expensive, as well as high electricity costs, Royal Mail eventually decided to jump the ship once again, and on August of 2024, all mail train services ceased entirely, this time indefinitely. And thus, it had put an end to Royal Mail's mail trains. So, that was the story of Railnet. It was an ambitious scheme that had aimed to create an efficient mail train network, but it had ultimately proven to have failed thanks to the untimely privatisation of British Rail and pointless restrictions. But now that we've talked about the story of Railnet and mail trains in the UK, let's talk about the future. Could mail trains in Britain ever come back? Well, with the popularity of online shopping with Amazon and eBay, and the rise of private shipping firms like DHL and FedEx competing with Royal Mail for alternative means of transporting mail, several other mail train plans outside of Royal Mail's control were being proposed behind the scenes. In 2021, there was a plan where several withdrawn Class 319s, Class 321s, and even a couple of HSTs were planned to be acquired and converted to be used for parcels traffic to compete with Royal Mail's mail trains. But this never got past the concept stage. But the biggest plan of them all was that shortly after Royal Mail had ceased all of their mail trains in 2024, an open access freight company by the name of Ferramis Rail had acquired the former railnet terminals in Wilson and Shieldmore, and had began to operate their own mail trains on the West Coast mainline using a fleet of withdrawn Class 321s that had been converted from passenger use to carry mail and parcels. And they even have plans to acquire the Class 325s, giving the units a purpose once again. And overall, that's pretty much it in future mail train projects. It's unknown as to whether mail trains will ever see a proper renaissance and whether a new railnet style network could ever see the light of day again. But with the rise of environmentally friendly modes of transport and the popularity of online shopping, I could definitely see mail delivery on the railways returning once again.